to the latest episode of the Celtic View podcast brought to you in association with Eden Mill and as always at the start of the podcast just want to thank Eden Mill for their ongoing support of Celtic and obviously for their support of this podcast and I'm joined today on the podcast with my Celtic View colleague Joe Donnelly and we're delighted to welcome onto the show uh, our reserve coach Stephen McManus, of course former Celtic player, former Celtic captain. Stephen, thanks for joining us. No, thanks a lot for having me on guys. Um, obviously, Dan he, he he set the challenge, he set the bar last week, so he, he was uh, he was quite pleased with his performance. So he's, he's looking for something similar from you today in the podcast. <laughs> 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 no, no, listen, like I said, it's it's just good to be on, especially at times like that's just to to kind of free up your mind a wee bit as well. So no, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and everybody keeping well, your family keeping well, and everything. Family are well. Um, my wife and kids are, are, are good, they're climbing the walls, but again, we're trying to kind of keep them into uh, a bit of structure, doing their schoolwork when we possibly can, make sure they're getting up early for their breakfast and, uh, and trying to keep them all active as well at the same time. But it's been it's been nice actually to spend a wee bit of time as a family. We've, uh, when you're in the football industry, you, you, the kind of time with your family is, is, is very limited. So in one aspect, it's been it, it's it's been nice, but again, you're, you're missing your, your kind of work. The, yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to work. You want to do as much as you possibly can. So it's it's challenging times, but I'm sure we'll all get through it together. Yeah, and I suppose I suppose for for players and coaches, your your daily work is always on the training field. You're always uh-huh. out, you're always with a ball, always working with players yeah. and formations and stuff. So that's a big challenge because it's such a, a departure from what they're used to. It is, you know, like you say, we're we're not able to be on the pitch. We've not been on the pitch for for for, for a few weeks. Um, so again, you're just looking to kind of um, self-educate yourself. You're looking at different drills. You're trying to come up with new ideas. You're reading certain books to to try and improve your knowledge, so that whenever the time comes, then to go back into the uh, onto the training pitch, then you're you're ready to go. And and, and like I said, our aim at it was their levels to try to produce players that the managers can trust and that John can and, and Damien can trust to play and put into the first team. And our aim is to produce players for the first team and hopefully become regulars, that's what their aim is and, 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 and like you say, we'll always strive to do that. Yeah, and, and before we started recording, you and I were talking about how, obviously you're a lot fitter than me but we started running first thing in the morning yeah. to keep active. I, I, I did notice that, that Joe kept kind of quiet at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you're speaking about screen time and spending too much time on the iPad in front of a, a video games console, that's more my bag, I'm more <laughs> adept in, the, in, in those areas um, and yeah, I've not really been out running. I probably should, given how often people are talking about the importance of that on the podcast and, of course, on the Celtic <laughs> website. Listen, I've, I've, got, I've got two young girls, so I'm unfortunately a computer or an Xbox or a PlayStation. They're not in my house, so if they were, I'd be definitely be sitting on them. But I don't think I've had a computer since I was a kid, since I've, certainly since the kids were born. So well, My yeah. excuse is that I've got I've got an 18-month-old who's running ah, around the house, and you mentioned yeah. climbing the walls. Uh, that's fitness enough for me, I think. Aye, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, Stephen, you mentioned obviously your role, the key role of you and Tommy, and then obviously we'll speak to Darren, who's working with the teens. And you, you touched on it there that you're working towards producing players that can then go into the first team, become first team regulars, and, yeah. and to get to that level of playing Champions League football for Celtic. And that must be, you know, it's a, a challenge for you, but it must be an exciting one for you as you're, you're starting out your, your coaching career. Uh, yeah, listen, I feel as if I, I feel as if certainly my own coaching career, I've been coaching for a longer period of time than what people probably realise. Like I say, I started coaching when I was at Middlesbrough. It was so like I left the club in 2010, I think it was, and then when I'm down to Middlesbrough, I started maybe about 18 months into my spell at Middlesbrough. I was injured with, a, with an ankle problem that I'd been out from the best part of three or four months, and. My wife and kids come back up the road um, at that time, and I, I think I was t- maybe 28, 29 when I really started coaching properly, um, and it was a great learning curve because it prepared you for that moment. Like I said, I knew that I was, I was wanting to go down the route of being a coach, potentially a manager at some stage. But again, you, you, I think it's important you need to kind of earn your, earn your, learn your trade and earn your stripes, and that's what I've kind of been doing in the coaching pit, in the, in the training pitch. So when the opportunity then came. It was obviously at Muddle to retire um, and go into the, the, the under-18 role and the reserve coach there. Um, it was a kind of no-brainer, which then prepared you for the moment to, to come back to, to a club, which has been terrific. Obviously, it was, when you come back, you were coming back as the under-18 manager. 
and again, I never expected to uh, progress as quickly as what I have done up to the reserve level. So, but it's been great. It's something that I've really enjoyed, and 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 like I said, all you're trying to do is trying to always improve yourself as a coach, as a person, um, so that you can then implement that knowledge back into the players and and educate them. Because our, our aim is to produce players that are capable of playing in the Champions League and winning. In the Champions League, that's important to our club, the, the aspect of winning as well, because that's what you need to do to be successful at our club. Yeah, because one of the things I always think, and I'm sure you've mentioned it before in interviews, is that obviously you have this you know, career as a Celtic player and all the things that you did and achieved, but you have to almost prove yourself to the players as a coach and, and show that you, you know as a coach what you're doing, because it's not past reputations as a player, it's, it's what you're doing now with them on a daily basis. Absolutely, you know, I think that's one thing when certainly when I look back in, in, in my own career, you know, you've you worked under some, some some very good managers, some really top managers. You also worked under under some coaches throughout your career that that, that maybe weren't as, as, as organised or as structured or because they relied on, on 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 a career as a player as if that was enough. But it's completely different. It's completely different. And and again, I've always said, even through my playing career, I remember, I remember speaking to Chris McCarter about this a long, long time ago, even when I was still playing. And I remember saying to Chris, look, the way I am as a person, you only get out of something what you put in. So when you, the time came for me to then focus on the kind of coaching career and to end the playing career, I had already prepared for that moment. So you're, I just to him, I said, look, I'm going to attack my coaching career the same way that I did as my playing career, which is to give it absolutely everything that I've got. So with that, you need to then update your different skill sets as well. So it's how you communicate, how you come across with the players, what's your knowledge like, your your, your organisational skills. Um, everything becomes really... And you're learning all the time. And, and that's I think it's important that you've got the mindset where it's open. You've, you've kind of got a kind of growth mindset of it so that you're... Like I say, somebody will put on a training session that might be coaching for the first time. You'll watch them and you'll pick something up. You'll learn something. And I think that's important. I think it's important to work at our club. You've, you want to produce the best players. You're working with the best people. You're at the best club. So the best way to do it is to is, is make sure that you're constantly learning, constantly improving rather than just kind of resting and just being happy where you're at. You need four or five within your your, your team that lead they create the culture and they lead by example in everything they do. And you've got that you've got that with, with Scott, you've got that with Callum, you've got that with James. It's and, and other boys feed off that. And then when they see your best players train the way they do and apply themselves on a daily basis. It inspires the, the the ones round about them, and certainly inspires the younger ones even more. It must have been brilliant that that session then for your boys. When obviously, as you say, Callum to me is just it's one of the one of the best players we've produced in, in recent yeah. years. But for him to, you know, when he's given that opportunity to rest, but instead he'd rather come and train, and that, that must just raise the standard, of the, you know, because they must want to try and impress him as much as impress Absolutely, you. Absolutely, you know, and it's but it just shows you the it shows you how. What it takes to be to 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 come through and 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 I say to our boys all the time, you don't want it to be just you don't want it to be a player that plays for Celtic once or twice, because there's been a million of them. There's been so many that have came and played for Celtic once or twice. You want to be the ones that that play fifty games, a hundred games, a hundred and fifty games, two hundred games, three hundred games. But you only do that with how you apply yourself and how you how dedicated you are to your profession on a daily basis. And again, somebody like Callum, somebody like Scott, that's what these that's what these guys have done for years, and they'll continue. Callum will, will, will continue to do it for years and years to come. Yeah, I think that's the, the dedication side, which you speak about, Stephen. I know you see that on a daily basis, but yeah. I think um, certainly we're a lot closer, given that we're in the media team. But fans yeah. generally, you know, you see the ninety minutes, and you don't necessarily see much else. You see social media, and you yeah. see how it's portrayed from from the outside, but. I didn't even know that about Callum McGregor, for example, that when you don't see him in the starting line, you think, great, he's having a rest. And it's good that he's also, as Paul yeah. says, having that that attitude, that determination to still keep himself active and get himself in with the reserves, which, yeah, I just, I can't commend that enough. No, and, and, and again, it's inspiring a generation. That's what, it, that's what it's key to our club, because whoever's in the first team from our academy at that particular time, they're inspiring the next generation. And that's what happens. So I've no doubt that certainly when we were coming through as young players, there was people that we were inspired by. And then when we then became the first team players, I've no doubt you were inspiring a generation. Then when we left, the next one then's come in. And that's what's important. And I think that's why it's 
that, that's an important why everybody's pulling in the same direction, certainly as a staff, because you know what the end game's going to be, you know what the end goal is. And when you then see players that then get to that level, it's a wonderful feeling. And it gives the next generation below that, that inspiration to go and become successful. You mentioned Stephen there when you're you know, obviously saying to the players you don't want to be the guy who just plays one game, five yeah. games, ten games, you want to play fifty, a hundred. You made over two hundred appearances yeah. for us. That in itself, and I've, I've often said to you know players, you know, it was, it was Tommy Burns, God bless him, we used to always yeah. say, you know, it's bad players don't stay a long time at Celtic yeah. and you know so, so in itself the fact you're you're over two hundred appearances, I know you're always looking forward, but that, that must be a nice thing to look back on as well. Yeah. As you know, like like when when you look back and your your career comes and goes, and again I'll say that many a time. I remember I remember Tom Burns saying to me, I think I was seventeen or eighteen at the time. It was again it was against mother, will believe it or not, at Glasgow Green for the under 18s And I remember him saying after the game, he says, "Your career will come and go," and 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 the blink of an eye, and I'm saying, "Tom Case." Because I've not even played in the first team or anything yet. And then, <laughs> and then it comes and goes, and then you go full circle, and you're now in the position that, that Tam and all this, Will McStay and Ken McDowell, Chris McCart, where we are, we are now in that position. And we're not, we're not relaying any message other than the message that get put back to us, because it's the right message, and I think it's important. At our club, you've got people that know what it takes. You need... In my personal opinion, when you've got Celtic-minded people at your club, it's the best way then to then implement the, the traditions, the history, and 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 and, and everything go, that goes with it at our club. Because you know what it takes, and you know what it means to people. Because it means so much to all of us. It means so much as as, as fans and these young players are the exact same. So all we are doing is trying to then inspire the next generation to then give them the platform to go and showcase their own abilities. Because the generation that are below your Scott Robertson, your Karen Mokos, your Adam Montgomery's, your own Moffat's, the next generation below that, and your and your your 2004 groups, your Adam Brooks's, your 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 guys like that. There's so many talented young kids coming all the way through our academy that that you just need to then get them up when we possibly can. It's there's no shortcut to success, and these boys they'll make their own pathway by how dedicated they are. Uh, Sunday, the, the 5th of April is the, it's the anniversary of the first of the three in a row under yep. Gordon. Uh, John Hearts had scored the winning goal, but yep. in that season, obviously Hearts, that was against Hearts that day, but the, one of the, they were our main challengers that season, yep. and that pivotal moment or that game on Year's Day uh, when you were the, the, the goal hero, and the, I, I I still remember that game. It's just it's one of those games, you know, sometimes you remember them, but they get yeah. goosebumps because it was a game that we thought we were going to lose and, we, and just that Celtic desire to, to never give up and win and the great traditions of scoring late goals. That, I mean, that must have been amazing to play in. So we're now into four minutes of stoppage time and Nakamura is over this set piece. Similar to what he can do with yeah. these. Similar area to the uh, McManus goal. A little bit further out, but quite capable of delivering from here. Scatchel was booked there too, I think. Nakamura again plating it in. That's Baldi. Here's McManus again. He scored the winner. Stephen McManus for Celtic. It was, listen, when I, certainly when I look, from a personal point of view, when I look back, probably my full career, um, and again, I'm no great at individual moments, but when, what if I had to pinpoint one moment, certainly in my whole career, that's the moment that probably gives you as much satisfaction because it was it was, it was, was just a moment that you, you could never have imagined. You know, I, I remember the game, I can't believe how long ago it was now, but again, you... I think Castle was always a difficult place to go at that time. Hearts were strong, very strong. Um, and they came at the traps really, really, really well. I think the first 15 minutes, Hearts were absolutely battered. As I think we went 2-0 down and probably deserved to be 2-0 down, maybe even more. Um, but again, when, with the players that we had, that group of players, it's, they were, again, resilient. They, 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 they came, back, came back very strongly. And, and you knew you were always going to create chances. And, and thankfully for me, I managed to get two goals. But it was just a 
an incredible feeling. I mean, because the fans, our fans were so close to behind the goal when you scored in the goal uh, that was right in front of the fans. So it was it was a wonderful feeling for me personally and one that's, that, that, that lives very well in my memory. Yeah, because yeah, I think Hearts were, Hearts were up 2 0 within, what, 10 minutes? 10 minutes, aye. aye. Yeah, and it was one of those ones where, um, you know, again, as a fan, you're thinking, right, okay, it's not the best of starts, um, but plenty of time to turn it around. Um, definitely didn't expect two goals from yourself in the last no, <laughs> six, seven minutes of the game. <laughs> I, I, think in that, I think in that season, I, I think I managed to score quite a few goals, which is great, but. None was important as as certainly the equaliser was, was probably the one that because you knew you were only going to then lose yeah. any ground and then the next one obviously came and it just became absolute madness. Um, which again is, is 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 terrific. I think I've got the it's probably the best photo that I've that I've seen and again I wish I had me being me, I've not got many photos of that in the, in the house of your career, but it's the one where you're sitting with your with your hands aloft, right at the fans, and you can see see the emotion, the the, the adrenaline that's that's going through the fans, the faces to celebrate, and it, and it was it was certainly a moment that put us well on our way to securing my first league title under Gordon. I mean, in terms of that that following season, mm-hmm. do you, you 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 became captain for the start of the next season? Do you remember yeah. when Gordon spoke to you about that and how you felt when you know you're you're then given that responsibility and following in the footsteps of some real big figures. It's, I, I remember being on a, I, um, I remember being a pre-season trip in Po. I think it was Poland that we went to, and again it was the first game. And and even back then, the biggest thing I had in my mind, Paul, was that I wanted to play because I made my debut. I was 21 when I made my, my debut, which was which, which was quite late on. Um, that I knew that any opportunity I had to play any game, whether it was pre-season, I wanted to play every minute, every game, because I always feel once you need to kind of wait that wee bit longer for something, you always appreciate it that wee bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so we went on a pre-season trip to Poland, I'm sure, um, because we had signed Magic and Arthur the, the, the year before. Um, and and, and the old, the, uh, Lenny at the time was the I think he he maybe given an extra week off, so he wasn't ready to then come back to 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 play it, join into the games as such. Um, so that was the that was the kind of first moment that I kind of as I went out. They obviously for the warm up, I came back in and the Aram Band Independent was sitting at my place, and I thought that's a bit strange considering you'd only really played one season, full season as a regular. Um, so it was a even then it was an unbelievable honour, and then any time that. The next season Neil wasn't playing, then I captained the side, and then it was the, that pre-season and the first day the manager pulled me back in, um, and said, "Listen, here's what I'm going to do." He said, "I, I, I want you to be um, the captain of the club," um, but that time I, I hadn't signed a new contract at the time, so I think you kind of used that dangle the carrot a wee bit to say, right, "Listen, you're not becoming <laughs> the captain unless you sign your new contract." So, uh, but the new contract for me was never in any doubt because at that time it was there was nowhere else that I wanted to go. And when you look back, it's club and to, to, to captain our club. And I said at the time you wanted to be a captain that won trophies, and, and I was lucky enough to win a couple as as, as captain. And, and when you look back in your in my career, over two hundred games for Celtic, it's it was incredible. But you, you were part of a winning a yeah, winning generation or something which. I touched on it the first thing that I'd said. Winning is the most important thing for our club when you become a first team player because you know the pressures, you know the demands and and certainly for our generation, we were part of a winning a winning a winning group. You were talking before, Stephen, about you know how quickly your career kind of flashed before you in conversation yeah. with Tommy Burns right at the very start. And just when, when Paul was saying there, the, the 06 or 07 season, um, the Champions League, you know, the, the group against Benfica, Copenhagen, Manchester yeah. United, the AC Milan in the last 16. And then again, as a fan, you know, looking back to the season before that famous Art Media game, there's yeah. such a short space between, you know, that kind of abject disappointment in Europe to, you know, the highest level of the last sixteen, yeah. and of course, did it again the following season. There's the margins there are so short, or the intervals rather are so short anyway. So it's no surprise that football careers do flash by, given how yeah. quickly things can can ebb and flow. I remember even at the time, you know, we were we were so strong at home, which was we it was amazing how we felt no matter who we were going to face at home, we would we we would be a match for anybody, whether it was Man United, whether it was. AC Milan, whoever it was, we knew that we were going to be a match for them at home. 
Delivery required by Hartley. Not a bad ball in by Hartley, real decision, and it's smuggled in by the captain. Step up Stephen McManus to give Celtic the lead against AC Milan. It's a scoreline to save her. Celtic 1, AC Milan 0. Well, along last Paul Hartley gets a terrific ball into the box. It's a beautiful height. Nicked on at the front post by Donati, I think. Dida comes all the way. Donati helps it on. McManus round the back. Clumsy finish, but absolutely priceless. McManus gets away from Ambrosini, who's caught watching the ball. Well, does he care? Just on the flip side, he couldn't win away from home. That was, that, was the, that, was the, that was the biggest disappointment. But again, to, to compete in the in the Champions League, the way we did, but to progress into the last 16 for two years was, was special. And again, at the time, because you're younger, you don't appreciate it the kind of magnitude of it and again when you compare it then to, 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 to the squad now over these experiences that this is what our club's all about it's where our club should be every single year but you can only get these by by winning your league and it's over like I said 30 odd games and there's no hiding place in these games you can win a cup but even when you compare it to the, the standards that our club have set in the last in the last four years, that that has been absolutely incredible, and it, and it won't be matched. And and hopefully we can we can carry on for many more years. And I've no doubt we can. We we like to say with Peter at the helm, we 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 Chris is the academy director, with Neil in charge, with John and Damien, and all the others falling below. We're, we're all striving for the same thing, and it's success, and it's to be relentless in that pursuit of of success. And just going back to you know, you know, I was asking you when you, you took over the captain's armband, it was one of the most nerve-wracking things having to think what you're going to say in the huddle before the game? I think you just can ask... Again, I've got no idea what I've said. And, and, and over the years, I've, 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 I've no idea. I think when you're younger, you're probably a wee bit more emotional. As you get older, you, you become a wee bit more kind of chilled out. But um, it's, it's, it's something that you, you just kind of say off the cuff. And... But what you do feel is even when you're standing in, the, in when you're in the huddle and you've got your arms around each other, the noise for the supporters is, is, is what you can hear. And you just feel it rising in the bigger games, it getting more emotional and, and it's 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 terrific to be a part of. And like you said, I was I was lucky to be a, a part of that. And and even now when you see the boys when when, when Bruni's got them in, in the huddle and and you can see them it's 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 probably iconic now in, in world football. Yeah. <clears throat> and just in terms of, we, we spoke about those goals at Tynecastle, but, you know, we, all, we also have to acknowledge that you're one of the few Celtic players that scored against AC Milan as well, which is, yeah. is no mean feat either. Uh, I, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think I scored for outside the box in my full career, and then no matter what club I, so I think I, I managed to touch that in with, with whatever part of my body that went in. But again, it was... <laughs> It was a bit no back then, and our, the biggest strength of our side was the collectiveness of the of the group. Um, it wasn't about one individual scoring. That any we had special individual talents. You had Nakamura, you had Sean, you had Aiden, unbelievably talented individuals. But even for them, it was about the most important thing was about being being part of the team, and that's what got that came for Gordon. Gordon was always about the team. He was always about being the best teammate that you can be. And it just goes to show you what what you can achieve when you's you, you've all got that mentality and all got that mindset of being together. It's funny that that's one of the things that always stuck with me from from when Gordon was at Celtic. And we used to interview him for the Celtic View, and he used to always when he always used to say about be a good teammate, be a yeah. good teammate. And you kind of you know at first maybe just as a fan you're not quite sure, but then what you kind of realise what he was meaning, and it was such yeah. a key thing, and it was so it was it seems so simple, but actually it was actually fundamental to any team success. I, I, I think what's there's got to be an identity f from your mind. There's got to be a clear and, and consistent message from whoever's your manager, whoever's in charge. And that's what I felt was a player. And you can see it back then with Gordon. It was it was about the team. Certainly with Brendan, it was it was it was about possession based and counter pressing and being aggressive with how you pressed. With Neil, it's more direct. It's more get the ball forward quickly but when we then do get the ball forward quickly 
the intensity, the creativity, the, the tempo, everything is through the roof. So every manager has got has got a certain style how they want to play. But again, getting back to what's important with our club, it's got to be the Celtic way. It's got, and I think that's that's where, as a manager, as a coach at our club, you need to fit into what our our identity of a football club, what's our DNA of a football club. And I think that's important, and that's what we try and implement all the way through our academy teams and all the way through into your under 18s, your reserves, because it's then got to then be consistent with how the first team are trying to trying to play. There's different ways to do it, but what's consistent is 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 having the identity of playing the Celtic way. And I suppose you know, as we just come to the end of the podcast, I suppose for everybody, it's just hoping that you know, in the fullness of time, you get back on that training pitch and start working with these. Uh, Celtic stars of the future, hopefully. Uh, listen, like you said, the, the most important thing is everybody throughout the football club stays safe, stays healthy, um, and then when the time comes to get back into work, then 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 we'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs>